Lord God, Heavenly Father, give you thanks for today and the opportunity to gather around your word. Teach us to celebrate, Lord God, the your grace, your mercy in our lives in the life of our brother Jack Stokes. We thank you, Lord God, for watching over him. We thank you for being with him. We thank you most of all for bringing him to faith in you. Bless us today as we meditate in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers my sisters. School was out. There was no students up here. It was nice and quiet. I could come up here and I could do my work. But there was always one person for that month or two that was up here with me. Man, it was Jack. He'd sit out there on that picnic table in the sun, just enjoying the sun, you know, and, and just sitting there in peace and quiet. I'd say, Jack, you need anything? No, I'm fine. And he sit there, content and happy to be sitting free and in the sun. I talked to him about that, and he talked about the fact that there would be months that would go by when he couldn't sit in the sun. I think sometimes you and I take for granted some of the blessings that we have, amen? amen. Our society looks at someone like Jack Stokes as like a second class, secondary human being. He did something dumb when he was a teenager and he ended up in prison for most of his life. No excuse. But the reality is that you and I are in the exact same boat, aren't we? Yeah, I've never committed a felony. Maybe the sins that I have committed in my own life don't have the earthly consequences that others do. But when it comes to my guilt before the Lord God Almighty, I stand just as condemned as him. Amen? Our society has trouble with that. Because they view people not through the grace of God, not by the blood of Jesus, but by the law. What you do and what you don't do. But you and I as Christians know that we are not seen by what we do and what we don't do. And that's a good thing because the reality is that if I try and stand before the Lord God by what I do and what I don't do, what? Who could be saved? We stand before the Lord God by his grace. And I want to talk to you a little bit about God's grace. God's grace is this. It is a love of God that he has for us even when we are unlovable. It, it, God's grace is this. It is, it is this love that he has that isn't based on you or I. It's a good thing because if his love was determined by how good or you and I behaved, what? <laughs> Because it's not just what I do, it's not just what I say, it's the attitude of my heart and the thoughts in my mind. God loves us because he has an internal, self-motivated love for mankind that loves us even when we are at our very worst. God's grace is this limitless thing that is so immense and so high and so broad that there is nothing that you can do to make him love you less than he does right now. And there is nothing that you can do today or tomorrow that will make him love you more than he does right now. It is at its peak right now. It is immense. You and I love each other, but our love is limited, right? We get tired. We, 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 we lose uh, patience. We, we don't have answers. We are limited. God's love, God's grace is limitless. And his grace, his love for us is not based on how we live or the choices that we make, but it is based on who he is and what he did. In 
And what God did in Jesus Christ was set us free from our own sins. All of us are shackled in this life. All of us have burdens that we bear, choices that we've made, things that we've done, things that we've failed to do. People that we've hurt, relationships that we've ruined. Guilt and shame. We all have it. Okay? But Christ has set us free. And on December 24th, 2001, God set Jack Stokes free completely. This is a certificate that he was given about six weeks before he died. It's a certificate that he got because he had been 90 days sober. Jack Stokes struggled with addiction to alcohol. It plagued him for much of his life, if not most of his life. And several times when we were working with him, we tried to, we tried to break that and we couldn't. And finally, by the end, he was, he was free of his addiction to alcohol. But not really. Addiction, we may learn how to cope with it. We may now learn how to put addictions aside, but they always affect us. And it was still with Jack until the Lord God ended his life on 24th December 2021, and he was free from his addiction, completely free. But that wasn't the big thing that Jack was free from. Jack had struggled with health issues for a long time. In and out of the hospital when we were dealing with him, I remember one time when they thought he had tuberculosis. By the end of his life, he was having a lot of health issues, and he was in a tremendous amount of pain. And on 24th December 2021, the Lord God freed him from his health issues. But that wasn't the big thing that he was freed from. Jack Stokes had been released from prison after 30-some years in, in jail. But you know, that that's not something that you really just leave behind. It's something that Jack carried with him every day of his life, and you could see it in the way that he walked. He felt like he didn't belong he walked with his head hung. He was free, but prison was still a part of who he was. It was still a burden that he carried. Until on December 24th, 2021, the Lord God freed him from that burden. But that wasn't the big burden that God freed him from. When Jack was a boy, he got a job at a local store, and the boss of that business abused him. made him feel worthless, hurt him, made him angry. I wonder if that wasn't a part of why Jack chose to do some of the things that he did. He was coping with. It's something that you can, if you've ever been, talked to someone who's a victim of abuse, it's something that you can learn to cope with, but you never really get over it completely. God freed him from that on 24th December 2021, but that wasn't the big thing that Jesus set him free from. All of those things have one thing in common. At the root of, of the abuse, at the root of, of, of prison, at the root of health issues, at the root of addiction, is one issue that plagues every human being, all of us, you, me, and Jack. Ever since, ever since Adam and Eve, mankind has been plagued with this. And every bad thing that happens, every rough thing that we deal with, every negative thing that comes our way, every single one of them has at its root this one thing. And that one thing is sin. You have it. And I have it. And Jack has it. And it causes us problems. It hurts relationships destroys good things. It brings death. Sometimes we like to make excuses and say, well, sin is not that big of a deal. But it is. It always destroys. And even if no one else knows about it, it destroys us. Our own soul, our own spirit, our own being. 
Even the sins that the world says are okay or others say are no big deal. They destroy. That's why God says don't. Thou shalt not. And it destroys. And when it comes to our relationship with the Lord God Almighty, it prevents us from being at peace with Him. If you, if you envision, let's say you die, and you're at a negotiating table, and on one side of the table is God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, and on the other side is you, and God the Father says, why should I let you into my perfect heaven? My perfect, righteous, holy, shining heaven. Why in the world should I let you in? What are you going to say? And the reality is that that day is coming, right? Either judgment day or the day that you die, there is going to be a time when you stand before the Lord God Almighty and somehow, in some way, you're going to have to find your way in. How are you going to get in? We stand here. And we try and dig up our own righteousness and our own goodness, which is what mankind likes to do, we're going to fall short. We like to sit here and talk about how good I did this and how nice I was here, and I never did that over there, and I was like this over here, and I gave to the poor like this, and I served in my church like that. None of those things really take away our wrongs. None of those things take away our sin. We can sit there and compare ourselves to someone who, according to the eyes of the world, lived worse than us and say, well, at least I wasn't as bad as. But the reality is, what does that do before the Lord God? Nothing. Because we all stand condemned. The wages of sin is. And that's not talking about being put in a box in a hole in the ground. That's talking about hell. What we deserve for our sins is an eternity separated from God in the fires of hell. And I can sit here and make whatever excuses I want, but it will not take away what I have done. When, before I became a pastor, I was helping out in a prison. And uh, I'd have Bible classes in there regularly. You did not have to tell a prisoner that they could not make up for the wrongs that they had done. They knew that they had hurt those that they loved. They knew that they had hurt other people out there. And there was nothing that they could do to make amends for what they had done. You and I sometimes think that by our good deeds, we can make up for the wrongs that we have done. And it's not true. We cannot. So how in the world can you and I ever get into the glories of heaven when you and I know full well that we have broken God's law maybe maybe not in the world's eyes in big ways we have broken God's law we have fallen short of his glory we have said things that we should not have said we have done things that we should not have done we failed to do good things that we should have done we have had bad thoughts wicked thoughts we have had lousy attitudes we have worried, we have been prideful, we have been arrogant, we have hurt, we have held grudges. How in the world can you and I ever get into the glories of heaven? I want to read you some verses. During your program, if I want to go before the Lord God, and plead that I am not such a bad person, that I deserve to go to heaven because I'm not as bad as so I will. Listen to what Galatians 3 says. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do most of the big things. Everything, it says. Everything that is written in the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. If I want to plead somehow in some way that I haven't been so bad and I haven't done this or I haven't done that or I've been a good Christian and I've gone to church and I've given my offerings 
If I want to plead my own righteousness before the Lord God, I had better be righteous from the time that I was conceived until the time that I die, every moment of every day and every situation and every person that I have dealt with. And the reality is that you and I know very well that if that were the case, we would what? We'd never make it. It's like, you know, we sit here and we say, I'm not like so-and-so. It's like two pigs deciding who stinks worse. You both still what? Stink. And sometimes we like to do this thing where we combine our good works with the grace of God and say that I'm okay. But that's not the way it works. These are, it is either your own righteousness or the grace of God. You don't get to combine the two. Look at the passage from Romans 11. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. We are beggars at the cross of Jesus Christ. We come before him empty-handed, like the prodigal son that says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Because we have nothing to offer the Almighty God that could possibly make up for the wrongs that you and I have done. We throw ourselves on the mercy and on the grace of God and say, Lord God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I have fallen short. I'm sorry. But what does God say? Shame on you. How dare you? That's not what he said. We're at the negotiating table. It's not what we bring to the table that matters. What matters is what does Jesus bring to the table? What does he bring? You sit there at the table and say, I, I, I can't plead my own righteousness, Jesus, because as hard as I've tried, I've fallen short and I haven't done it. Jesus holds out this cross and this blood stain cross that he was nailed to you for the sins of the whole world. For your sins and my sins and Jack's sins. For the big sins in the eyes of the world, for the little sins in the eyes of the world. For the sins that affected other people and the ones that didn't. All paid for on that cross. And he holds out the empty tomb and says, but see, look, I paid for it all. It's all gone. And Jesus says, this is what I have done for you. Why is it that you and I get to go to heaven and cross into God's perfect kingdom? It is because of the grace of God, the love of God, shown and proved in the cross of Jesus Christ, payment made by his blood. That is what we do. And Jack knew that. On Saturday, 18th December 2021, it was the last day that Jack Stokes was lucid. After that, his pain got so much that they started to give him more and more morphine to deal with it. And I had the opportunity that day to spend an hour talking with Jack. And it was very plain. Doctors had already said that he had weeks to live. And I sat and I talked with him about death about his life and about his sin and about all of that. And I talked to him about Jesus and we read the Bible and we prayed together. He said, Pastor, this is probably the longest sentence he ever said to me. Pastor, I want to go to heaven and be with mom. He understood that though Jack had done things in his life that he should not have done, that he was forgiven by Jesus Christ, loved by him, and heaven was his home. The world looks at Jack and says, what does he have to offer? You and I look at him and he says, he has the same thing to offer that I do, the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jack now rests and he has been set free, truly set free from all of the things that this world did to him, all the things that he did in this world, all of the guilt that he bore, the shame that made him hang his head low. He's set free, truly set free from all of those things. 
from sin, from the power of sin, from the consequence of sin, from the guilt of sin. He is set free. And for the first time in Jack's life, he is now truly free. And so today we celebrate. Celebrate the grace of God, the love of God that saved our brother. That set him free. It's the same freedom that you and I have today. You do. You know your sins, right? You have things from your past that trouble you, things from your present that still seem to have a grasp on you, and you're not sure how to. Consequences of things that you've done in the past, and you worry, and you stress, and you wonder, and you wish you could go back and. reality is that we have been set free from all of it. All of it. Listen to the last verse that I have there. Galatians chapter 5. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. We have been set free from sin, from the power of sin, from the consequence of sin. Not that there aren't earthly consequences, but God takes hold of those things. And he flips them over on their head and they're no longer consequences, but they're opportunities. Power of sin that seems to hold on to and won't let go, God has broken that. You don't have to follow sin. The guilt of sin, we sit there and we beat ourselves up because we did this or failed to do that. As if God has not really forgiven us. We live as God's fully forgiven, dearly loved children of God. And whatever we did yesterday, the day before, whenever, has all been forgiven by Christ Jesus. And though the devil tells you that you have to answer to him, you don't. You are free. Though sin tells you you are guilty, you're not. You are forgiven. Though our own sinful mind makes us question and doubt whether or not God truly loves me because this bad thing happened or that bad thing happened. The reality is that we are loved of God, children of him, set free from sin, set free from all of it. So let us live, not as the burden, but as those set free. And whatever it is that we have done, Whatever it is that shackles us and burdens us, it's all gone. And our job as brothers and sisters is to announce to each other that freedom. Let us not shackle each other in sin. Let us free one another by the grace of God. By loving, accepting, forgiving, living at peace with one another. Because that's what we are because of the blood of Christ have been set free just as Jack. And someday, God will end your life too. <coughs> Happy note. <laughs> and he will set you free from everything that this world has done to you. And all the things that you have done in this world. And you will be truly free. We can celebrate in heaven with our brother Jack. thank God today for his grace for the sacrifice that he has made that all of us might be set free that we might be truly forgiven in him Lord strengthen our faith to live every day as your dearly loved and truly forgiven children for Jesus sake Amen. stand and we join together in our next song it's a version of Amazing Grace <laughs>